everyone and welcome back to another episode of Cassie L Talks. In today's episode we're taking a look at a worker placement game called Underlings of Underwing by the Pericles group. In Underlings of Underwing you and your opponents have meeples that are your dragon handlers and you're taking these meeples and you're putting them out onto different dragon eggs in hopes of being able to hatch these eggs under your care and the dragons become yours to be tamed. Underlings of Underwing plays one to six players and the game plays about 20 to 60 minutes. It depends on how many players you're playing with. And the game was created to help with teaching color theory. In the game, in order to hatch these dragon eggs, you need to put these little crystals called elements on them. And the different elements are going to be red, yellow, green, blue, orange, and so on. And the color theory part comes in when you are looking to make maybe a secondary color and you want to combine say red and yellow to create orange. The game has different play mats that help teach all about color theory and it's really cool. So let's go ahead and take a look at the player mats and the whole shebang. Here is Underlings of Underwing. All right everyone, welcome to Underlings of Underwing. I have the game set up for two players. I have player one here and they are the blue uh, player. And then here's player two, they're going to be the purple player. In a two player game, you're going to have dragon eggs laid out in a three by three area. If you're gonna play with more than two players, you're gonna do four by four. Here's a close up of some of the eggs. And uh, what I thought was super cool is that I learned each one of these eggs is different. Not, there is no duplicate of any of the eggs or dragon art in here. So I was really excited to see that I'm going to, you know, as you draw cards out of here, you're gonna get all different kinds of art. Over here we have our field and the field is going to let us get these cool shiny crystals later on in the game. And over here we have our round tracker. In the game the round is tracked by hours and so they suggest for two players to do 15 hours of the game. So we have our tracker here on the 15 circle. Which you can see right there. We also have on this mat our other two meeples. In the game, it is a worker placement game and you start with two meeples and what you're doing with these meeples is you're going to be placing them in different areas of the game to allow you to do actions. These different actions will allow you to eventually hatch these eggs, which will become dragons, dragons equal points, and that's how you'll win the game. In the beginning of the game, we both have our two meeples and our play mat. Here's the play mat close up. You'll see here we have space to hold up to six meeples. Now for two players, they suggest you only use four for the game. So we're only gonna end up having up to a max of four meeples in here. Here is where you're going to put gems as you collect them. And then on the other side of your player mat, you're going to find instructions on um, how to combine colors to make secondary colors and all different kinds of information about color theory, which is part of the game is to teach you about color theory. At the beginning of the game, you're also going to have this little egg and you give this to the first player. And at the beginning of the game, you both draw two of those crystal elements from the bag randomly. You drew an orange and a white. I drew a blue and a blue. Now that we have started the game with our meeples, we've got our starting elements. We have the field set up and all of the dragon eggs are out. We are ready to play. In Underlings of Underwing, players take turns going um, back and forth or around in the circle if it's multiplayer doing actions. The actions are going to include taking your little meeple here and putting them in different areas of the player area. If you choose to take your meeple and place it on one of these dragon eggs in the hatching grounds, you claim that egg. If that egg hatches and there's a dragon that's revealed and your meeple is on the egg, that dragon becomes yours and that's how you get those points from the dragons. But in order for an egg to hatch, you have to have the element that it requires on each one of these squares here. For example, this dragon egg requires one yellow and two white. This dragon egg requires two green and one yellow and so on. Later in another phase, you will get to place elements on these dragon eggs and that's how you'll get your chance to hatch eggs throughout the game and turn them into dragons. If you don't want to place your meeple on a dragon egg in the hatching grounds, you can place one of them in this area over here called the field. The field has all of the different colors that you will find that you'll need to hatch dragons in the hatching grounds. Some of these colors are more difficult to find than others. White is the rarest color. Next is black and then the rest are about the same. If you choose to place your meeple in the field, you you pick whatever color you want to place it on and then at the beginning of the next round if your meeple is on a color you get that color and then your meeple is going to move forward if you don't want to take a specific color from the field you may leave your meeple just sitting in your play area 
and that is called being off duty or on break. Once players have gone back and forth deciding if they're going to put their meeples on eggs in the hatching grounds, in the field, or leave them on their play mat, they move into the next phase, which is adding those elements to the eggs. So one by one, players have to take their elements, and for each meeple they have, they must place one of these elements on an egg. If at some point an egg has all of the colors it requires and there's no meeple on the egg, the egg hatches into the wild. If an egg hatches into the wild, bad things will happen. But if the egg does not hatch in the wild and there's a meeple on it, good things will happen. Let's say at some point we're further along in the game and it gets to phase three where we have to place stones. I have one, two, three meeples but I only have one stone. I have to place this, and let's say I have to place it here. This egg has now both of the elements it requires. You would flip it and immediately do what the red ribbon says. In this case, the red ribbon says to add a green element to adjacent eggs. This is really bad because this egg doesn't have a meeple on it and it has green. This egg, it does have a meeple on it, but for you it's not good because it's mine. So other things can happen when those eggs hatch. However, let's say we have a meeple on it, it's your meeple, and we've all placed the elements that we have to place. For you, it's one, two, and for me, it would be one, two, three. We then would move into phase four. First part of phase four is finding any of the eggs that have a meeple on it and have all of the elements it requires. That player first takes the elements off and puts it into the bag. They then take their egg and put it in front of them. The meeple stays with the egg until the next round has a phase four. You then draw a card from the deck, fill the space, and keep going. Let's say we're into the next round. We move this slider down. Nobody has anything in the field. So what we get to do is draw elements from the bag. You draw one element for your meeple on the hatching grounds and one element for your meeple that's still with the egg that's getting ready to hatch into a dragon. And I get to do three. One for this egg, one for this egg, and one for my off-duty meeple. We now get to go ahead and decide if we wanna keep our meeples where they're at, except for your one that's on the egg, it has to stay there, or if we're okay with where our meeples are placed. If we wanna take a meeple off of any of the cards or out of the field, we have to take them and put them first into our break room. If at some point we had a meeple that was on the field at the beginning of the phase one, they would get to draw, let's say I'm on the blue one, a blue element, then they would move their meeple to the next spot. Now if they had chosen to take it off the field, it would go to the break room, same way as if you took one off of one of the eggs in the hatching ground. Everybody's decided what to do with their meeples. We now move into the next phase where we have to place elements. I have one, two, three, so I have to place three, and you have one, two, and you have to place two. Now we move into phase four. None of these eggs hatched, but you have an egg over here that is hatching into a dragon. You get to flip your card over, you get three points, and you get to do what the green ribbon says. This green ribbon says you get to take either one green or red element crystal for free. The dragon stays face up in front of you for the rest of the game. You'll notice that it's kind of hard for you to get more meeples throughout the game because most frequently the way to get one more meeple is to hatch the right kind of dragon. So there's one more way for you to get meeples which are called dragon handlers in the game and that's to first get 15 points and then you get to get one more meeple from the track and the next is at 30 points. If you already have a third meeple at 15 points and a fourth meeple at 30 points you don't get any extra meeples. Players play back and forth like this going rounds through rounds choosing where to place their meeples putting them in their break room on eggs until eventually you're gonna get to the last round you're going to get your eggs those eggs actually get to hatch right away instead of having to wait one more round to hatch and then you add up your points each dragon's point value is both on the dragon side of the card and on the egg side of the card. Once you've added up all your points from your dragons, you're also gonna get to get uh, bonus points dependent on these little icons here, which indicate if they're cool or warm colors. The way you can get bonus points at the end of the game is by getting the net of the different temperatures of your dragons. For example, in this hand, one, two, three, four cool to the one warm, so that's a difference of three. If anyone else has a greater difference than you, they would get the bonus. But if that's your greatest difference in the game, you get a bonus of 15 points. Let's say this was our dragon hand. If we have two here and two here, plus a neutral, that balances out to a perfect zero. If in a game you have a perfect zero balance, you also get a bonus of 15 points. Now the way the game tries to teach color theory is actually really easy. You take a look at some of these cards here and they have some secondary colors 
and they also have some primary colors. And in the game, if you are trying to make orange, you may choose to combine red and yellow elements, stack them on top of the card, and combine them to create the orange. White, because it's the rarest one of all, cannot be created. The only way you can get white is by putting a meeple on the field or by drawing it randomly from the bag. For the black color, you can combine either the red, blue, or yellow colors, or you can combine the orange, green, and purple colors. Once you've added up your bonuses and the points in all of your dragons, whoever had the most points at the end of the game is going to be the winner. There's also rules in the game for a solo version which has its own different side for the field and you kind of play against a, an evil character, so to speak. That's Underlings of Underwing, hitting Kickstarter August 25th. This card's so cute. So that was Underlings of Underwing. It's very cute and the way the game is created, you don't even really feel like you're learning anything. You're just, I mean, as an adult, of course, you already know that red and yellow make orange, but as a child, you might not even feel like you're learning anything. And it's really cool to watch all different age groups enjoy this game. I definitely enjoyed this game mostly because the art was amazing and I'm not huge on worker placement games, so to find one that is lighter on the worker placement mechanic just really had me excited about learning about this game. If you want to learn more about Underlings of Underwing, feel free to check out the links down below, and they have a Kickstarter coming up, so don't forget to check that one out when it hits Kickstarter. If you like this video and you'd like to see more of my videos, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can also find me on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter, and I also write for the IndieGameReport.com. That's Cassiel signing out with Underlings of Underwing by the Pericles Group.